Many people will want to use Ethernet when setting up their home network, as it's generally faster and more reliable than the likes of Wi-Fi. But can Ethernet cables be considered a fire risk? In today's video, we'll look at how Ethernet cables work and why you really don't need to worry about using them in your own home network. Hey everyone, it's Chris back again from homenetworkgeek.com where we talk about everything home networking. If you enjoy this video and you find it helpful, it'd be great if you could drop it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's jump straight in and find out if Ethernet cables even carry electricity in the first place. Ethernet cables are responsible for transferring data signals from one device to another. These data signals are considered to be electrical, but they don't supply power as such. The same Ethernet cables, however, can be used to deliver more substantial amounts of power to certain devices. This is referred to as Power Over Ethernet, or PoE for short. Power Over Ethernet can come in really handy when you're looking to power smaller devices that don't have as large power requirements, like a wireless access point. The one Ethernet cable would carry both the power and data that the device needs to function, so it wouldn't need its own dedicated power supply. Power over Ethernet works by injecting a voltage of around 48 volts into the Ethernet cable. This very small amount of power is enough for the PoE device to work efficiently, but also keeping it safe to use. Realistically, only the Ethernet cables that have PoE injected into them can be considered to carry electricity. Although there is a possibility for anything carrying some form of electricity to start a fire, Ethernet cable is considered to be low risk thanks to the low amount of voltage that's used. Even those cables with PoE injected into them carry significantly less voltage than many other electrical appliances found throughout your home, so using them really shouldn't be a concern. Something to note is that although they are still incredibly unlikely to cause a fire, the non-standard Ethernet cables that are especially flat or thin can get a bit warmer when using PoE. For this reason, it's probably best to keep these types of cables reserved for when you don't need to use power over Ethernet. So if a fully functioning Ethernet cable is very unlikely to cause a fire thanks to the low voltage that's used, where do you stand when using an Ethernet cable that's been damaged? Even a cable that is worn or even has part of the copper wire exposed is still very unlikely to cause a fire Again, thanks to that low voltage that's used. That being said, it's probably not a good idea to continue using a cable when you know it's been damaged. If you notice any damage, no matter how big or small it is, it is recommended that you replace it as soon as possible. Although an ethernet cable that has part of its outer jacket frayed may not cause a fire directly, what it can do is help spread a fire that's been caused elsewhere. In addition to replacing damaged cable as soon as possible, you can help mitigate the chances of a fire spreading by using an ethernet cable that has a plenum rated plastic shielding. This is used as a fire retardant on the cable itself and can go a long way in helping stop the spread of a fire that has originated from somewhere else. So ethernet cables are classified as low voltage, which means they're very unlikely to cause a fire. Even those that are carrying power over ethernet are only using around 48 volts which is significantly less than other electrical appliances that you use throughout your home. So I really don't think you need to be concerned around the safety of using ethernet cables. The benefits that they bring, like faster download and upload speeds, and being more reliable than the likes of Wi-Fi, far outweigh the minute risks that come with using them. So if you want to check out some ethernet cables for yourself, I'll leave some Amazon links in the description box below for you to check out. Whilst you're there, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring that bell to turn on the notifications. Also, if you haven't already, pay a visit on over to homenetworkgeek.com where I have a ton of articles that cover everything home networking. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.